first five paved the way for all of the black football players at UGA who came after them. What legacy do you think the first five left? And how does that legacy impact UGA today? You know, I think we're seeing the legacy. I mean, the fact that so many African-American players have been able to, to come to University of Georgia, uh, I can't imagine what it was like for them. Um, I've heard some of their stories, not all of their stories, but understanding what they went through from a, um, you know, standpoint of, of struggling to even go to class, the backlash they received from students as well as parents, as well as teachers. Um, and they have to deal with that every single day while still still going and trying to perform on the football field and in the classroom. Um, those were definitely some some very, very tough times. And so when I look back, I say thank you. Uh, they created a legacy that paved the way for so many other um, black players that have come through here. You know, I played in the 90s and I don't think that we as a team appreciated what those guys did. And they had been there, I guess, really 20 years prior to that. And now you look at what they've been able to do and being able to um, acknowledge and appreciate the legacy they left is pretty special. Just creating the pathway, you know, is the first most important thing and showing that to other young black student athletes that there is a pathway for them at the University of Georgia. They went through the trials and tribulations of just getting there, getting on the team. And, and I'm sure their journey was much more difficult and hopefully it's gotten easier along the way, but just showing to young kids that it's possible is the first step. We're excited to have the opportunity to celebrate them. You know, they've spent some time here on campus, um, you know, with our student athletes um, and just, you know, having that, seeing that opportunity for, you know, their generation to pour into the current generation was just phenomenal. You know, I think that it's also a reminder for all of us. I mean, the fact that uh, it wasn't until 1970, I believe, that the SEC actually integrated, and that was because Alabama got whooped by USC. <laughs> and so there wouldn't even been any black players at University of Georgia if it weren't for that happening. And so on the one hand, um, you know, the legacy there is one of grabbing hold of an opportunity and understanding that, you know, they had an opportunity to do something that nobody did and that, that their, um, the ripple effects from what they did would last all the way until now. Um, but also it's a realization that, I mean, 1970 wasn't that long ago. And the reason why they were brought on was because so many people in the South saw what happened in Alabama and the fact that, hey, we're not taking advantage of all the talent in the state of Georgia. We have guys that can play and that can contribute, but we're simply discarding them because of the melanin count in their skin. We're just really grateful. Um, for all that they have done, they mean a lot to our program. They mean a lot to the university. I think representation matters, and, and hopefully their representation and what it's grown to has shown that this is a university for everyone. They will want us to be even better now than, than, than they were, and, and, and they, they're our biggest cheerleaders. I know they are, and, and we honor them today. There was lots of listening and learning after last summer's protest and civil unrest. Where do you think UGA football and college football in general stands now in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And what are the next steps that need to happen moving forward? I think the first thing you said is the most important. I mean, listening and learning is kind of what uh, we're all trying to do. Um, it's been very important for our staff and uh, our entire organization to listen uh, to our players and learn. And, you know, we had some really moving meetings last uh, summer, and it was uh, incredible to hear our players talk about personal experiences and uh, share their experiences. You know, when I had an opportunity to speak to some of the guys on the team, we had about three or four um, kind of conversations with uh, myself and a bunch of other guys who have played before. And, and it wasn't just what I heard it was what I didn't hear. Um, you know, I heard that there was a lot of, um, confusion, I would say. Uh, th there was a lot of anger, but I didn't hear from everybody. And so I feel like we're still in a place where a lot of people feel like their voices aren't heard. Um, and that's Black players and white players. Um, some white players feel like they just don't know what to say. They don't want to be called racist, but they just don't know what to say in the conversation. A lot of Black players feel like it doesn't matter what I say, these things continue to happen. So let's just move on and let's just play. And so there is... Um, definitely a, a fear. Um, there's a, a confusion. Um, but I also did hear a lot of courage. And so what encouraged me in listening and being a part of what the guys were doing was that 
Um, these are young men who care about their communities, care about the city of Athens, care about the college campus, and most importantly, they care about um, their teammates. It's important to keep things relevant um, and keep the conversation going for so many of our players. And through Courtney and her programs um, with diversity, equity, inclusion, she's been incredible um, to allow our players a space that they feel comfortable to have these conversations. We always say that uh, we're a bulldog family, and that's really the atmosphere that we have. Well, I really feel like as a family, we we got closer together after everything that happened last summer and really just sat together and talked um, and how, you know, we can be continue to be change agents. And so I think as far as the future, you know, it's really just continuing to listen to each other, continuing to build relationships. I think the key to all of this for diversity, equity, and inclusion is building those connections, taking the opportunity to learn um, one another's stories. And so I think we had that, but I think it's really strengthened um, us as a, in the past year. And now, you know, the goal is just to continue to provide that space to discuss these things, especially some of these, as they're called, uncomfortable conversations, you know, really leaning into those conversations, you know, being willing to, you know, uh, put yourself in someone's shoes to have empathy and really just get to know each other as people and our full story. One of the things that we put a focus on here at the University of Georgia was action and what, what are we doing? And we, uh, we, we created a foundation called Dogs for Pups and got in and, and got active in the community. And we know that the biggest difference we can make is in our own backyard with young students. Um, so whether it be raising money for Wi-Fi for students who are learning virtually or canned food drive or snack drive or coat drive, or um, even donating money from the spring game to proceeds to a local charity here in town, it became a mission of action. And it's gotta continue on beyond this just one year. It can't be a one year thing. It's not a moment, it's a movement. You have a lot of young men and women in all sports um, and students in general that are saying, you know what, um, we might be in this college campus right now, but I know we're not going to be here the whole time and I didn't grow up here. So let's figure out in the United States how I can make a difference. And they're realizing that their voices carry weight. And that's an exciting thing. You know, bottom line regarding our student athletes, our staff and everybody in our athletic community, we just really want to create a place where everybody feels comfortable and where they feel valued and where they can thrive and grow. And I think, you know, as a program, um, you know, everybody is committed to that goal from Coach Smart to our incredible staff, um, our administrators. And that's something that really, you know, shined through even more um, over the past years that we really are committed to this being a place, you know, where everyone can be their full selves and their best selves and we're created to do whatever it takes to make that environment and to be in change agents in the campus community and the local community and beyond. Today's players have taken social justice initiatives into their own hands and the ones we've talked with say that that's happened with a lot of support from the university and the athletic program. This seems like a big change from the past where players essentially had one role to just play football. Moving forward, will players continue to enhance their roles off the field? In the past, there's been this idea that, that you know, players were there just to play football. And maybe that was why. I mean, that's why those five gentlemen were brought to University of Georgia to play football. I mean, we know that it was about having a competitive event or being, being able to compete. But within that, every generation of player um, has had their own forms of activism. Um, now there's, you know, social media and you can, you know, say things that are heard around the world, but whereas before maybe it was more local or maybe it was more interpersonal. Um, but there's always always been athletes and people in general who have pushed the needle further. I mean, we're talking about five of them, but we can name five others that are well-known, all the way from Muhammad Ali to John Carlos. I mean, you know, the list goes on. You know, our players had several meetings and they wanted to take action. They didn't want to just post things on social media and be words. They wanted to take action, and a big part of them doing that was the Dogs for Pups program that Coach Hankton and several of our staff members have implemented, and they feel like they've made a difference in our local community through action. And uh, that's what we've preached to our players. Don't, don't just talk about it. You know, show me with your action that you're willing to give your time and make a difference in your local community. You know, in this past year, we've really seen our student-athletes find their voice, um, you know, have – 
um, the opportunity to really talk about the things that matter to them and to see how they can utilize their voice and their platform, you know, to make a meaningful difference. When we as a department show support and guide them the right way, they can really uh, make a positive impact. So hopefully that's something that continues. And um, I couldn't be more proud of our student athletes, what they how they use that platform the last year uh, for good and for positive change. It's been great to see them find their voice and have the opportunity to utilize it and to see with their own eyes how their voice can make make change and make meaningful change and make a difference. Football players at University of Georgia, um, you know, we have a great opportunity to lead the state um, because of everything we know, but also when we leave the campus, many of us end up back in the state in some capacity working and have influence and so th there's no greater, in my opinion, group of, uh, of, of men, at least, of young men, at least, um, that are poised to, to make those types of changes in our, in our society.